Jesus. Thank you, Thank you Lord. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. We could leave right now and say we <laughs> felt God. Praise the word. Amen. How about we read from the book of Acts instead? Shocking. A Pentecostal preacher reading from the book of Acts. So. Amen. I want to welcome Kevin, Gabrielle, and Kaylee? Kale. 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 Okay, sorry. Kale Harris to our service today. Amen. We hope you will experience God. All right. Acts chapter 3 and verse 6. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none. Does anybody else feel like that? <laughs> but such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle, ankle bones received strength. And he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising. And praising God. Hallelujah. Amen. Walking and leaping and praising, it almost sounds like he was dancing. He was walking and Amen. Sometimes you just feel like dancing. Well, that's all right. This is a Pentecostal church. Amen. And I'm going to focus in on that part right there. Such as I have. Such as I have. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your word. We pray, God, that you would just continue to move, speak to hearts. In the next few moments, Lord... Open the eyes of our understanding and help us to receive what the Spirit would have for us today. In Jesus' name, touch each life that's here, Lord. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. Such as I have. There is a saying, you never know what it's like to be that person until you walk a mile in another man's shoes. But at times, that saying can take on a new dimension. Billy Mills, in 1964, he went to the Olympics. The Olympic Committee for the United States, they said, we're sorry, we ran out of shoes. We don't have enough shoes to give you, so uh, if you don't mind, could you talk to one of the other athletes and see if you can borrow their shoes for the next event? And so he borrowed some shoes from one of the other athletes that was there. And you know, he was the only U.S. athlete that won a gold medal that day, running in someone else's shoes. He raced and won in a pair of borrowed shoes. There was a famous baseball pitcher that pitched for the St. Louis Cardinals. They called him Dizzy Dean. He pitched a three-hitter. The problem was, they called on him to pitch. He didn't have any shoes. They just called him up. He came up to the big leagues and they gave him all of his gear and they didn't have any shoes in his size. And he looked around in the dugout and they said, Who wears a nine and a half? Give him your shoes. And he went out there and pitched a three-hitter in one with a pair of shoes that he borrowed from a teammate. When you think about this in a spiritual sense, each of us operates 
with things that we have borrowed. Such as I have. Think about in the context of what's going on here. Peter, John, they're going to the temple to pray. They had seen so many great miracles. People were repenting. People were being baptized in Jesus' name. Families were being changed. Lives being touched. Great miracles happening. And as they walk along and are get ready to walk into the temple, there they see this lame man begging for alms. And they realize, I don't have any money. In fact, what I do have is not really mine. But God gave it to me. God has given me His Spirit. He gave it to me. I didn't earn it. I didn't deserve it. It was just simply His grace. All I can tell you today is great miracles can happen because of what God has done for me. God endued me with power. He gave me His Spirit. And I can tell you that I got it. Woo! I got it. Oh, I don't understand it why God chose me, but one day when I was praying, I was calling out to God, and all of a sudden I felt the power of God falling on me. And I can tell you this, I got it. Woo! And I want to share it with anybody that wants it. To, such as I have, God gave it to me. And you know what? He said, I want you to go out and share it with everyone else. And if there's somebody that came into to God's house today that needs to be healed, God is the same God today that He was back then. Such as I have, what we need to do is be bold. Boldness. I believe that boldness prompted Peter and John to pray for this man. They could have just walked by and went into the temple to pray. But God does not want us to be sitting up on a hill, untouchable. He said the church cannot be hid. The church is a place for the lost and the hurting. The church is there for those who who need a touch from God. God gave it to you, the gift of His Spirit, so that you can share it with others. Amen. God is calling for you today to stop being timid. God is calling for you today to stop being nervous about sharing your faith. God is saying it's time to have the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, it's time to stand up for God and say, such as I have, oh, I got the Holy Ghost, and I'm ready to share it with everyone that wants to know about Jesus. If somebody says, hey, what are you so excited about? I'm ready to tell somebody, God is the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. The same God that changed me, He can change you right now if you have the faith to believe. I don't have any money for you, but such as I have is better than money. What I have is better than money. God can reach in and He can touch your ankle bones right now, and He can bring strength into your legs. Are you ready to jump up and praise God? God can change your life. God is looking for somebody who will stand up and say, I will not bow to the gods of this world. I will only bow to the one true and living God. God is looking for people who will make up their minds that they want to live for God and Him alone. God is looking for somebody who will be faithful and true and stand tall for Him in these last days. The Bible says in the last days that there's going to be so much iniquity in the world that so many people are going to be cold in their faith. But I'm determined. I've determined that I'm not going to let my love for God grow cold. 
I'm not going to be cold in my soul, but I'm going to be on fire for God, such as I have. You have to keep that fire burning inside of you to reach out and let God flow through you. God is waiting for you today to have a boldness. We need to pray for boldness in the Holy Ghost. I think God is ready for us to have bold prayers. Bold prayers. The kind of prayers like Joshua had. The kind of prayers that says, Son, I need you to stand still right there for a few minutes. And if you don't believe that God can control the universe, you weren't paying attention last week. I tell you what, I sat right here in that parking lot and I was so amazed. It was 1.38 in the afternoon and I was watching cars come up this street and all of a sudden their headlights came on. I was like, wow. At 1.38, all of these outside lights started coming on and I looked up and I could see the ring of fire around the sun. And I knew, I just, I couldn't help it. I had to say, Oh. And I thought about when, when God spoke to the Egyptians and said, I'm going to cause a darkness to come upon the earth. God can make that happen. You read the Bible, the Bible can come alive. You think that darkness can't come upon the earth? I saw darkness come upon the earth. He can make darkness come upon the earth at any time that he chooses. He made darkness come upon the earth. I think it's time for us to have bold prayers that says, I believe God can do anything. You need a job, God can give you a job. You need healing in your life, I believe God can give you healing in your life. It's time to stop saying things are impossible. I believe with our God, nothing is impossible. It's time to be bold. Stretch your hand out over the sea. Take your rod, the rod of God, and stretch it out over the sea, Moses. That was a pretty bold prayer. Stand still and see the salvation of God. And the seas turn back. It's time. In Acts chapter 4, the Bible says the church prayed for boldness. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost. And the place was shaken. I'm ready to see this place shaken. Anybody ready to see the place shake? I'm ready to see the place shake. I'm ready to see the power of God move. Boldness. It's boldness that comes from God. Simon Peter admitted that he didn't have what the man desired, but he knew the source of his supply. Such as I have. Such as I have. It doesn't come from me. It comes from him. It comes from my Savior. God gives us the victory. He can bring salvation in our lives. Whatever we need, He can do it. He is able. Remember when David went up against Goliath? All of Israel was frightened because of the giant. When they looked and they saw his size and his weapons, his spear was gigantic, his sword. But I believe David looked beyond all of that. He looked beyond and he saw You come against me with a sword and a spear and a shield, but such as I have. What do I have? I come against you in the name. I come against you in the name of the living God. And we have a name, folks. We have a name that is above every name. We have a name. We have the power. We have the blood. We have Jesus on our side. We have the Spirit such as I have. It's time to stop thinking about not what we don't have, but it's time to start thinking about what we do have. We have God on our side. The gates of hell cannot prevail against us. It's time to stop saying, the devil's beating me down and taking my... Attacking my family, it's time to start saying, I know that God can deliver my family. I know that God can save my family. I know that God is on my side, such as I have. I have a great big God that fights for me. I come to you in the name of the Lord. The shepherd boy, he refused the king's armor. 
but he stepped into the shoes of the king of kings. He fought the battle in the name of the Lord. I come in the name of the Lord. That's what we need to do. We too need to come in the name of the Lord. We need to clothe ourselves in his power. We need to wrap ourselves in his righteousness. We need to speak in his stead. And we need to know that we have him on our side in everything that we do. Listen to John 6 and 2. It says, A great multitude followed him because they saw his miracles, which he did on them that were diseased. I'm doing all the work. Y'all don't mind, do you? I was reading about a preacher who went to Russia, and he was talking about how during the... Everybody tries to tell you, oh, communism is so much fun. Don't believe it. It's not fun, okay? So he went to Russia, and he was living there. He was seeing it firsthand. Socialism. He said, food... Supplies were rare. Gasoline was almost non-existent. Medicine and medical supplies were in short supply. Well-trained doctors could diagnose a patient's sickness, but the people remained untreated because there was no medication available to treat them. In fact, even basic medication such as aspirin was a treasure because it was so hard to obtain. That's the part they don't tell the kids in school when they talk about socialism. In the midst of this dismal state of affair, he, this man traveled to Russia. And guess what he said? Such as I have. I don't have a bunch of money to give medicine to everybody. But I'll tell you what I do have. I have faith. I have a name. I have, you ready for this? I have a God. My God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory. And so he said, I'm going to rent a theater and have a meeting and we're going to have healing for anybody who wants to be healed. Come and we will pray for you that God will heal you. You see, so he waits for the long-awaited day to arrive. He drove to the city to begin his meeting, and he could not believe what he saw. Thousands of people were already waiting in line. The line was wrapped around the building when he got there. He stood up on the stage, and he looked out over the arena. It was actually a hockey arena. He was stunned. There were 8,000 people there. Many were sick, people who had no means of obtaining any medicine. And they desperately were turning to the power of God in hopes of physical healing. Night after night, we saw mighty miracles occur before our eyes. Blinded eyes were opened. Epileptics were healed. Deaf ears were unstopped. I don't want to read too fast past that. Imagine each time somebody their deaf ear was unstopped and they could start hearing again. It was just the power of God opening someone's eyes. But he said perhaps the greatest miracle of all that he had ever seen, there was one man. 19 years earlier, this man had been paralyzed from the waist down. He had fallen off the roof of a house. On the first day of the meetings, he saw this man as he hobbled toward the stage on crutches. On the second day of the meeting, the man came forward and asked to receive the Holy Spirit. On the fourth day of the meeting, he showed up wanting to get baptized. But on the last night of the meeting, just as we closed the final service, I heard a noise to my left, and I turned to see what the commotion was all about. This paralyzed man had released his faith. He had released his faith, and he began to take his first steps in 19 years. He threw his crutches into the air, and let them hit the ground. Now he was standing up and no one was holding him and he began to slowly walk. He took one step and then another and with each step he began to move faster. Soon he was running. (laughs) 
Soon he was running back and forth, and the vast crowd was gasping with shock at the miracle they had just witnessed. The entire miracle had ju- the entire crowd had just seen this miracle take place. Such as I have. What do we have, folks? We have the great power of the Holy Ghost. The great power. At the gate called Beautiful, Peter and John came and brought a message of hope and deliverance to this man. And I believe that this man, because of their boldness, because of their willingness to share what they had, they brought victory. They carried a message of victory and hope. And I can tell you right now, as I look at that message, I see him leaping up, walking. I believe he was dancing. God, we have to make a decision. We want to have victory in our lives. We will not sit still. You know, they say when you stand outside the wailing wall, these Jews, if you watch them, they do like this. They won't stand still. It's like they're praying and they're moving their feet. I don't want to sit still. Oh, I don't want to sit still. I can't sit still. This Holy Ghost inside of me, it's like a fire shut up in my bones. There's some people, they get the gift of the Holy Ghost and they just want to sit on the back of a pew somewhere or come to church every now and then, but not me. It makes me want to do more and more and more for God. I was reading a story one time about some Jews that had been captured by the Germans and they were fixing to take them to the concentration camp, and it was like freezing cold outside, and they were making them stand there in the cold. They took their shoes off of them. They were so cold, and they were standing there like this. And they stayed so cold that one by one, they just started shivering and sat down and gave up. But there was one young man, he just kept going. And the German guard finally just looked at him and said, you can go. He had such an energy, such a zeal, such a love. Oh, sometimes I have a a spirit in my heart that makes me just want to dance. It's like fire shut up in my bones. It's like David. I believe that when the ark came into the town and he felt so encouraged and so excited about God, he was just in front of the ark and he was going like this. Oh, sometimes you just got to let it out. You got to let it out. You got to just go like this. Get excited about God. Just lift up your hands. Start to move your feet a little bit. Uh Oh, Brother Wolf, you're just too emotional. I I don't get emotional like that. Well, have you ever been hammering something and the hammer went boom? I am not emotional. You probably went, ah! Right? You do have some emotions in your heart. and You can have some emotions towards God. It's okay to say, Lord, I am so thankful for what you've done for me. It is okay to lift up your voice and begin to say, God, I am so thankful for what you've done for me. Oh, you've brought me through so much. You've delivered me through so much. You know, the Bible says when the Red Sea crashed down on the Egyptians, you got to finish reading the story. When the Red Sea crashed down on the Egyptians, you know what the people began to do? The Bible says they began to sing, and then they began to... Somebody started going like this. Goodbye, Pharaoh. Goodbye. Oh, we don't ever have to see your chariots ever again. Goodbye, devil. Goodbye. It says they got it on the edge of that Red Sea and they started dancing like this. Goodbye, devil. You're out of my life forever. Woo. 
when the Spirit of the Lord gets in my heart, it makes me want to dance like David danced. I was reading a story one time about Saigon. Not a good time for America, but 1975, there was a few reporters left when the Vietnamese finally crashed through the gates and came rolling in. And they said they saw just the strangest things, all these soldiers coming out of the trees. They were everywhere all around there. They just waited until that moment to come out and show themselves. And they took over the town. And they said this one man, he came out and he unzipped his pack, set it down, and he took off his little sandals. And he had a pair of very fancy shoes, penny loafers beautiful looking shoes and he puts them on his feet and he steps in the middle of the streets of Saigon and he starts going (laughs) so the reporter went over there and asked "What, what is he doing ask him what he's doing and the guy says these shoes were my friend's shoes and he got killed, but before he died, I promised him. He, he always said he was going to dance on the streets of Saigon. This was his hometown. He said when we came and took Saigon back, he was going to dance in these shoes. I made him a promise that I would dance for him in a pair of borrowed shoes. Well, Brother Wolf, what does that have to do with your message today? I'll tell you exactly what it has to do with my message today. I'm here today because of what God gave me. It's not anything I've done to earn it. It's not anything I've done to deserve it. I can only dance today because of what God gave me. I tell you what, I'm dancing with His righteousness. I'm dancing today because of His blood. I'm dancing today because of His great love that He has for me. I'm dancing today because of His great sacrifice. He went to the cross for me. Oh, in fact, when I get to heaven, I'm going to take my crown that He gave me and I'm going to say, Lord, this is Your crown. And I'm going to lay it at His feet because I'm dancing in borrowed shoes right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, these altars are open. This is your chance right now. Why don't you talk to the Lord today? Thank Him for all the good things that He's done for you. Such as I have. If you don't have the Holy Ghost today, I want to encourage you to reach out and touch the Lord. Is His name? Reach out. He's here. He's ready to give it to you right now. He's ready to pour out His Spirit upon all flesh. The promise is unto you and to your children, to all that are afar off. The promise is for you today. And He says, I want to lead you. Just put your trust in me. How great is our God. Come on, church. Come on, church. How great Don't miss this time. Is this day. There's a visitation in the house right now. He's the only one. Woo. Yes, Lord. Forever the same. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He rolled back the water. Of the mighty Red Sea. Yes, Lord. He said, I want to lead you. Just put your trust in me. How great is our God. Yes, yes, yes. How great is his name yes, yes, yes. He's the only one <coughs> Forever the same Come 
Come on. Such as I have. Give Isaiah. Come on. Come on. Come on, reach on out and pray for somebody right now. Somebody needs some help right now. Come on. Pray one for another. Hallelujah. Woo! I need that. Yes, Lord. Just put your trust in in me. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, somebody's got need. How great is his name. He's the only one. Forever the same. He rolled back. The water of the mighty red sea. He said, I want to lead you. Put your trust in me. Come on, put your trust in him. Hallelujah. My, 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 my. Yes, Lord hallelujah. <coughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ma 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 ma. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Ikapa shataramo. Ma. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Don't miss this time of his visitation. Mm. My, 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 my. Ooh, me tell you. He cuts up, Mama, you're on the most side. What I feel in this house. My, 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 my. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. My, my, my. Come on, somebody needs to reach on through the crowd. There's not, we're not finished in here right now. The Lord's not finished right now. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. <laughs> 